All right, next up we're gonna be talking about white balance. White balance is really important because it gets baked into your, your movie file. And it's just like picture style. So you wanna get it right um, if you can, if you have time. It's one of these things, if you're running and gunning and you don't have time to get it perfect, that's all right, as long as you get it close. Because if you're way off, trying to fix it in post will take forever, especially if you're new to color correction or trying to remove a color cast. All right, so we gotta talk about what is white balance. Basically, white balance is really simple. Um, you're telling the camera what is white. With our eyes, our eyes do it, our brain actually probably does it just instantaneously. We go inside, outside. We could be under fluorescent lights. We could be under tungsten lights. We could be under um, daylight, cloudy, uh, shade. Doesn't matter, our eyes figure it out on the fly, but our camera, for the most part, um, can't do it automatically. Even though it does have automatic white balance, um, and since we're not shooting raw, and we can't change it super easy in post, um, it's really important to get it right in camera. So, right now, I am shooting this all in daylight. Um, there's snow on the ground, and light is actually reflecting off the snow, and actually the sun is back this way, so it's hitting the snow and kind of coming into my office window, which is actually a double pane kind of uh, sliding door actually. All right, daylight is about 5,500 Kelvin. Um, with these full frame cameras, the 6D and the 5D Mark III, we can actually dial in the Kelvin. So we can dial it into taste, whatever we want, a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler. We can also use the presets. Um, there's lots of different presets to choose from to get us there quickly. And we can also do custom. Um, so we can actually use something like a gray card or a white card. Um, this is usually a little bit more accurate to get a custom white balance. Right now, what I wanna do is kinda of step through all the different color temperatures. And I'm gonna be using daylight as my base. So right now I don't have any soft boxes on. And what I'm gonna do next is, I'm actually gonna turn the soft boxes on next. And these soft boxes have fluorescent lights on them. They're actually better than this kind of fluorescent light. This is an El Cheapo. The ones that I've got on these soft boxes are pretty expensive lights and they're daylight balance and they have what's called a high CRI index. Now with compact fluorescents like what I've got in here, um, they run cool, which is great. They use less energy, but that comes at a kind of a compromise because their color renditioning index, um, the quality of light in terms of colors that you see. Like if you've ever been, uh, probably one of the lowest CRI number light would be something like a metal, hal metal halide light that you would see in a parking lot. And if you've ever looked at your car, let's say your car is normally blue and you're looking down at it under these um, parking lot lights, let's say, and you look down at it and your car looks green, it's not the right color. Well, it has a very low CRI index. These, you can get in different varieties. Usually the ones that you buy from the store are pretty cheap. Um, sometimes have a low CRI. I think they're getting better. The ones that I have in the soft boxes have a high CRI. And basically what happens is to make them run so efficiently, don't use any, hardly produce any heat and use not that much current draw. They have, and the green spectrum, um, basic, I'm not, and I don't know, a whole bunch about light theory, but basically uh, when you have a regular normal incandescent light or regular lamp light bulb that you have in your house, it has pretty much even um, light throughout the entire spectrum. This one doesn't. It doesn't have energy across the whole spectrum like an incandescent does. It has basically a big spike on green. So sometimes you can get kind of a green bias um, with these lights. So let's go ahead and turn these lights on and maybe you will see a slight green tint when I do it. Okay, now I've closed the shades, closed the shades, and I've turned on the soft boxes. I've got two soft boxes, one kind of right there and one right over there. And so right now I have kept the color temperature that I set custom to the uh, outdoor light um, is still set that way. So the color temperature that you see right now should look a little bit different uh, because these daylight balanced are not probably totally matched outside, but they're usually pretty close. And you probably notice that the fill light in the room has changed quite dramatically too. But let's go ahead now, I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna actually um, use my gray card, and I'm going to get, uh, I use a custom white balance on these soft boxes and see how it changes. All right, now we've actually custom white balance to a gray card using 
these uh, soft boxes with the fluorescent lights in them. And I think you're gonna notice it looks maybe a little bit cooler than it did before. All right, we're moving our way down the color spectrum. Right now we're using a um, regular household lamp light and uh, it could be clear or it could be frosted like this one. And we haven't changed the color temperature for before. So my skin is probably gonna look a lot more orangey or yeah, warm or reddish looking. Um, just a really quick history lesson just to kind of understand where all this is coming from. When Thomas Edison designed the light bulb a long time ago, he, I believe he used a carbon element in the light bulb and he wanted to match it after the candle, uh, what color temperature the candle gives off. And if I understand from Wikipedia, it's around 1850 or so. Um, so, you know, the modern day light, um, doesn't use carbon, it uses tungsten. And so we have a preset for that in our camera and it's um, around 3200 Kelvin. And so you can actually dial it right to uh, tungsten and you should be in pretty good shape if all of the lights in the room are similar to a household lamp. Now you're gonna run into situations where it's not just gonna be a household lamp, it's gonna be something like a compact fluorescent. Well, these are usually, depends on the, there's different types. Um, and sometimes it won't tell you what it is on here. But a lot of times the white fluorescent um, preset that you have in the camera will work really well for when you have compact fluorescence. Um, Cause they also like, a, you know, we've talked about, they also kind of give off a little bit of a green tint to them. So I think it, pulls it more to, towards magenta in that preset to help offset that. And then you're gonna run in situations where you're like in an open office or something like that and you're gonna have these tubes. Well, the tubes are come in two varieties from what I've seen. Um, you'll see like a janitor might order the wrong type and you'll have a ceiling of just a whole bunch of these tubes and some will be um, what's called like soft white and then some will be a bit warmer and so you have a mixture of them which makes it even harder to get right but usually these will also be work really well for the uh, white fluorescent preset that you have in the camera um, but in situations where they are mixed then you really do need to get like a gray card and you know, use that to get the right color temperature um, along the gray card what you can do too is with the presets is find something in the room or wherever you're at with you know different lights and try to find something that's very neutral like this gray or a white wall and then look don't look at your display but look at the wall for a few seconds and say okay that is my brain is telling me that's what's white then look down at your camera it's like oh that doesn't look the same as what i'm seeing on the wall so then start playing with the uh, kelvin adjustment um, if like if you're in a room that's like 3200 uh, or a tungsten bulb, um, you know to start around 3200 and say, well, the wall is close and then just start moving in either direction and you'll say, oh, oh, oh right about there. And you can just kind of dial it into taste. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna color correct for this before we go any further. Okay, now we've color corrected for this particular light bulb. Now you're gonna notice there's a little bit of a mixture going on here because the blinds are bleeding in some natural light into the room. So behind me, that wall is actually gray and it's not the blue that you're kind of seeing it as. So we kind of have a mixture light, but I, cu I custom white balance to here because I just use basically a gray card and then I use my EOS software, which we'll show how to do later and I tapped on there and it corrected it for me. Um, so basically you're gonna run into like three different situations. Um, so you're gonna be outdoors and I gotta tell you the white balance on these Canon cameras works awesome. I think it works better than Nikon. Um, and Nikon gets a little bit confused but white, automatic white balance, Canon cameras outside work great. You pretty much don't have to choose between cloudy, shade, or daylight, it's gonna, it's gonna nail it for you. Um, and then, so that's one situation. You're outside, automatic white balance, works great. The second situation is you're gonna be in a, with a light bulb like this, tungsten, go to the tungsten preset, and it's gonna work pretty good. And if it doesn't work pretty good and you're close, then go to the Kelvin adjustment, work your way down to 3200 and kind of work your way around. It won't, you shouldn't go back, you know, it'll be maybe 2800 to like, 3,600, somewhere in that range, you're gonna find something that's gonna work really well. And again, like I said, find something neutral in the room, something that's gray, white, or maybe even black. Black's harder, but 
especially white, look at something and you'll, and then just look at the screen until you get it to where it looks like the actual white wall, for instance. And then the other situation is you're gonna be in an office space or somewhere where you're gonna have white fluorescent um, tubes. Um, just dial it in that way. Um, and then uh, in those situations, if it doesn't quite look right and there's a little bit of green bias to it, um, just go into custom white balance shift and then bring it down towards magenta ever so slightly and it will get rid of that and uh, it should look a lot better. All right, now I'm gonna step through all the different presets that you have. As our control, we're gonna start off with daylight. And right now I have no lights on the room, just sun coming in through the, the window here with the light bouncing off the snow. So what we're gonna do first is, and I've custom white balanced it to this, so this is our control. So now I'm gonna work our way through different presets. Okay, this is the daylight preset, daylight. All right, this is the shade, shade, and you can see it got warmer. All right, this is cloudy, cloudy. All right, this is tungsten, and you can see it got blue. So normally when you have a tungsten light at 3200 and uh, you wanna make it bluer because it's already so warm. So since we're already on daylight, it's gonna get even bluer. All right, this is fluorescent, a little bit warmer than um, the tungsten, and you can see it's, uh, it's just a little, it's still on the cool side. Because again, we're comparing this to natural daylight as our control. Uh, just for kicks, this is flash which looks very uh, much like a tungsten light. All right, now we're back to custom white balance for just daylight, no other lights are in the room. And I wanna give you a few hints and tricks for custom white balance. Even though I'm not gonna go and show you how to custom white balance since we've already done that in a previous chapter, I wanna give you a few tricks and hints. Um, the first one is in Canon's manual. When you look through the viewfinder um, and you see kind of that spot meter circle in the middle, Basically, all you have to do to get a proper white balance is to fill um, just that portion of the frame. So if I put this right in the middle of the frame like I am, and uh, that's all you need is just right in the middle. You don't have to fill the frame. It just has to be in that spot meter center of the, uh, the frame. The next item is it doesn't need to be in focus. I can be wildly out of focus. It doesn't really matter. Um, exposure wise, it kind of does matter because if you're like two or three stops off, you want to get your exposure set right first and then set your white balance on the gray card. Um, or you can use the gray card to actually get the exposure first and then um, do it. And like I said before, um, if I didn't say it before, you can use white, but Canon recommends um, gray as being more accurate. A couple of other things is what you want to do is my light source is pretty much this direction. It's not towards, you know, the light is not coming right over the camera or behind the camera. It's coming from that direction. You don't want to take your gray card and basically point it towards the light source. You want to point it, angle it pretty much right at the camera. Um, and that'll give you the most accurate, not only exposure, but it'll give you the most accurate white balance as well. A um, couple other things, if you're in a pinch and um, you don't have one of these, um, these do fold up really small. You could, you know, fit them in your pocket and they, you know, they don't take up <laughs> any room in terms of your camera bag. Um, you can use paper, um, an envelope like this, a regular paper, but what I found with these is they try to make this a little bit, look a little bit whiter. And what they do is they usually add a chemical or something into there with a, has a slight bit of blue in it. So using that, won't give you the most accurate, but if you're in a pinch, uh, a piece of paper, white piece of paper will definitely work. So over the years I've noticed, and it didn't take too long, I would say maybe six months to a year after doing so many custom white balances, you'll look through the viewfinder and you'll look at the gray and you'll say, ooh, it looks cool or it looks warm. It looks too blue or it looks too orange or it looks too green or it looks too magenta. You're gonna, after a while, you're gonna you're train your eye. If you do it enough, um, you will train your eye and you'll actually be able to sometimes actually just take the Kelvin and dial it pretty much to eye and be pretty close. So you'll be surprised how fast your eye learns what a neutral gray is. Um, there's lots of things, you know, in terms of video that I've trained my eye for, you know, I never saw Moray before. Um, well, I did, but maybe on a subconscious level, but you know, now it annoys me and I don't like to have Moray. Same thing with, um, training your eye to what you know neutral gray is like. You'll get better at it over time. So the next thing I wanna talk about is um, if you don't have time to do this, um, 
a lot of times you're gonna be like, Dave, I'm running a gun in and I just don't have time to put a gray card in the frame to get the right one. So um, let's say you've dialed it in to whatever you think is closest, tungsten, you know, fluorescent light, daylight, automatic white balance, whatever. Um, but you do at the end of the shoot have time to put this in the frame. So you've already gotten yourself somewhat close, but you can get yourself even closer and save yourself a ton of work and post by let's say you're done with the shoot or whatever you've done, just pull this out, put it in the frame, um, the actors or whatever you're doing, the interview, you're done. You just put this in the frame. You could be in a frame with it. It doesn't matter. And this will be a reference. So when you're in your nonlinear editor, you can take your eyedropper tool or whatever and click it on what's neutral and it'll help get you closer to what removing whatever color cast you might have in the image. So basically in a nutshell, you know, use your presets um, when you'd want to use custom white balances in a situation where let's say like for fluorescent lights, um, you can dial in the preset, but you might have a green tint. But when you work with a gray card, it will get you exactly where you wanna be. Because there's two different things when it comes to custom white balance. There's the, the blue to, or cool to warm look, the blue to like let's say orange, um, that type of push and pull. And then there's also the, the green to the magenta, that type of push and pull. Most of the time when you're dealing with lights, you only have to deal with the uh, blue to warm. But sometimes, depending on the lights um, or whatever is going on to make it as correct as you can, use custom white balance and you will get both of those done at the same time. All right, that's pretty much it for white balance.